of the man who invented a new branch of math called calculus, figured out the composition of light, and gave us the laws of gravity and motion which govern the universe, the man who is considered the founder of modern science, Sir Isaac Newton. The decadent atmosphere of Cambridge was something the reclusive young Newton wanted no part of. To resist temptation, Newton drew up a plan that he'd stick to for the rest of his life. The way to chastity is not to struggle directly with incontinent thoughts, but, but to avert your thoughts by some employment, or by reading, or meditating on other things. As a student, Newton devoured the latest scientific ideas. It was widely accepted by this time that the planets orbit the sun. But now the question was, how did the planets move? What held them in their orbits? And it was here, in the apple orchard just outside the family home, that the legend of Isaac Newton was born. The story, of course, is that he's lying in the garden there, and instead of thinking about girls, he's thinking about the moon and how it goes around the earth and so on. And uh, he, uh, an apple falls, and the story goes, bang, he suddenly has the idea that the same thing that's making the apple fall is what's holding the moon in its orbit. For the first time, it was possible to calculate quantities that are constantly changing, like the speed of a falling apple at any particular moment, or how a planet's position changes over time. With this technique, Newton invented an entirely new branch of math called calculus. And if that weren't enough, Newton overturned accepted wisdom about how colors are produced. Newton found a safer way to investigate light and color using a prism. From Aristotle to Descartes, scientists thought sunlight, or white light, was pure. Colors were produced by physically modifying white light, which they believed passing it through a prism did. But Newton decided to see for himself. Sending sunlight through a prism, he produced the spectrum of colors. And then he went one step further. He sent the red ray of light through a second prism. Instead of making a new color, it remained red. Newton concluded that white light is not pure, but a combination of all the colors of the rainbow. Newton was elected a member of the Royal Society, a group of leading scientists in London. My question is this. What kind of curve would be described by the planets, supposing the force of the attraction toward the sun to be reciprocal to the square of the distance from it? An ellipse. An ellipse? How do you know? I've done the calculation. You have? How did you calculate it? I'll show you. There uh, should be here somewhere. <clears throat> Uh, don't worry, I will redo the calculations. I'll send you a copy. Halley's question would change science forever. But Newton wanted more than a mathematical proof. He wanted to know how the planets move through space. For the next 18 months, Newton worked on this question day and night. He barely ate. He barely slept, and he saw no one. Finally, he submitted a 500-page draft of his masterpiece, the Principia Mathematica, to the Royal Society for Publication. It is the greatest book of science ever written. Newton reasoned that if gravity governed motion on the Earth and the Moon, why not on Jupiter and its moons, which he had seen with his reflecting telescope? Why not the entire solar system? In a bold leap, Newton proclaimed that this invisible force operates everywhere in the universe. For Newton, religion and science were inseparable, two parts of the same lifelong quest to understand the universe. 
Newton himself wanted to design a universe in which God was absolutely present and absolutely powerful. Newton owned more than 30 Bibles, and he examined them as rigorously as he did the natural world. Correlating biblical passages with astronomical information, he redated ancient history, drawing up elaborate charts and chronologies that show civilization starting around 980 BC. With the same fervor that he brought to science and math, Newton also combed the Bible for keys to the future. Newton died in 1727. He was 84 years old.